like that on video? All right, we're good. Thanks for coming. Nothing on TV today, huh? Boring. Boring. Always like to start off with a little humor. As I've grown older, I've learned that pleasing everyone is impossible, but pissing everyone off is a piece of cake. And I am so living that lately. There is a gap in your resume. What were you doing in 2020? I was washing my hands. I just picked up my social distance support animal. It's too hot to even move. It's really hot. A credit card is what you use when something costs too much and you want to pay more for it. I'm concerned you're not putting enough effort into my inheritance. If you are what you eat, I'd rather be thin like a french fry than round like a head of lettuce. I do believe in that. Um, COVID-19 in Westminster, you know, we're, we're at about 76 cases. Uh, we don't have any active cases of residents at this time. Associates were about 110 cases since this all began, which is all the way back in March of 2020. Wow, that's a long time. One active with mild symptoms, and you may have heard that I had COVID as well. Did you hear that? Yeah. Just curious about the rumor. How many heard that before I said it just now? It's not too bad. So this half of the room is really informed. <laughs> so if you have any questions, ask this half after this meeting. Um, I, it was pretty bad for me. I, I've avoided it for two and a half years, but I'm, I'm vaccinated and boosted all up, but it, it hit me hard. Um, I work from home, though, for eight out of the ten days I quarantine. And I have a recreational vehicle, an RV, so my wife told me to go to that, and they dropped food off to me every couple of days. <laughs> so it, wasn't, it wasn't too bad at all. How many have had the second booster shot at this point? That's good. A lot of you. Great. Um, the COVID precautions have really stayed about the same. Um, we're still limiting the number of guests in the dining room, breakfast and lunch. There's still no um, guests for dinner. Um, transportation services are at full capacity again, uh, but be aware that the numbers in Travis County and Williamson County are trending up. In fact, the, it's a 20.3% um, infection rate at this point. And so we do recommend you wear a mask when you're outside of Westminster and when large groups. Um, still no guests in the audience. Well, actually, no, we've been allowing guests in the audience for activities. Um, this may change in the next couple weeks if the numbers keep trending up. And if we get multiple active cases amongst our residents, we'll probably start restricting guests for activities. Um, you know, you really need to practice good hand hygiene, especially washing and sanitizing your hands. So when, even when you're out and about around Westminster, if you touch a doorknob or the elevator buttons or something like that, just take extra precaution, sanitize your hands. Um, and if you're if you're if you're ill, even if you think it's just wow, my allergies are really acting up today, stay home. Um, and if you can't stay home, then wear a mask to protect everybody else. Um, visitation in the healthcare center is still limited to two visitors at a time, and you all are treated just like outside visitors. You have to screen in to the healthcare center. You have to screen in at the desk and sign in. And the reason we have to do that is because we have to maintain a blog of all visitors that go into the healthcare center because it's a separate licensed entity. Um, and then we, we just actually had an infection control survey because we had one of our cooks um, come down with COVID. And every time we report somebody comes down with COVID, the state comes in just about every time and they come in and do a survey and they check our infection control practices. One of those practices is making sure that everyone logs in and screens in, has their temperature taken through that system. So that AccuShield system that everybody uses to screen in, that's how we keep the log. And so we have to turn over those records to the state every time they come in. And, and you know, we've been really good. We've been deficiency free. Um, so far we've had nine um, infection control surveys from the state over the last two years, and they've all been deficiency free. So that's really good. And we also had a full book survey 
um, last month where we came out of it deficiency free as well. So deficiency free, that's zero deficiencies, that's as good as you can get. So that's really good for us. Um, questions and answers. Um, I, I had this question submitted again, but I, I talked about it last month, but I left it, so I left it in here. How do we arrange and or sign up to use the grill and or the pizza oven? And please contact Brian Grossman in the food and beverage for training and to arrange time to use it. And I, I, Brian Grossman at W Manor, it's a really simple email address, or you can call reception and ask to speak to him. Um, and then they'll train you on how to use the equipment and you can, and you can use it. Um, and, I, and again, I had this question, are you shutting down the Preston gym before the new gym is up and running? No, absolutely not. We'll ensure that the new gym is completely operational and functioning well before we make any changes to the current gym. Um, and there will be a fitness annex um, created in the Preston. Um, and then it will be up and running before we shut down the main fitness room. And I got, I am not moving the little store. I don't know where that came from, but that's not happening. The little store is gonna stay where it's at. Um, another question about the solar panels. Uh, when are they gonna be installed? They're actually being installed right now. Um, over the last uh, week, you may have seen them moving the um, supplies and equipment up to the roof of the Preston building and the Windsor building. They did that with a big lift and crane. Um, so though that, the equipment is now laying up on the roof and they'll start to actually lay out the grid um, next week. So it's happening. Um, can you remind residents to keep pets on a leash? Yes, when residents are outside of your apartment, they should be on a leash that you are holding the end of in your hand. <laughs> That's called pet control, right? Even if it's a cat. If it's outside of your apartment, you should maintain control of the pet on a leash. That doesn't mean that you can have a leash on the pet and the pet is running away from you. You need to hold the other end of the leash and maintain control because if you know, res another resident could be tripped easily by, by a leash or by the pet. Um, I've seen pets knock folks down, even little ones. So please take good care of your pets. Keep them on a leash. How do we donate to hidden treasures? Yeah, it was talked about in the Manor Banner that um, hidden, the um, theater that's downstairs in the press is gonna be made into a hidden treasure store. That's, that's true but it's not yet, so please don't drop things off down there. It's not yet, it's still a theater, so let's let's try to make sure that we contact Hidden Treasures, Phyllis Waddle, um, and, and they'll have a committee member come by your apartment. It may take a day or two, but they'll come by your apartment and pick up the items, okay? Or there's a gray cabinet in the visitor parking garage where you can drop small wares off. Um, they would prefer you not drop clothing off there, but just small wares housewares. What are we supposed to do with abandoned laundry? Yes. Nothing. <laughs> Please leave it in the laundry room. Most of the time, residents remember that they left laundry and they go looking for it. And, and I'm happy to report on a couple occasions we've been able to reintroduce the laundry to their owner. <laughs> and, and it's been very happy and both of them were joyous about it. So, you know, let's let's leave it alone. If if you need to use a washer or dryer and it's holding you up, then certainly it's okay if it's been, you know, 15 minutes or so to remove it, put it on the counter or on top of the appliance and then they'll come get it. But leave it leave it in the laundry room. Let our housekeepers, janitors pick it up. We'll bag it and then we'll hold it for a day or so, and then hopefully they come looking for it. And, and if they don't, within 30, so if they don't pick it up immediately or that day, then we'll keep it for 30 days and are lost and found. And then after that, we'll donate it to Hidden Treasures. But, but don't be a bad neighbor and take their laundry and donate it to Hidden Treasures because <laughs> you know, they left it in there too long. And don't throw it out the window or anything like that. Nobody would do that here, would they? No, I didn't think so. No, you can't open the window. The balcony door, don't do that either. Are we getting spectrum Wi-Fi? If so, when will the change be occurring? So I think I talked about this last month, that 
we have what's called Inspire Wi-Fi, which is the Westminster Wi-Fi right now in the building. And that's, that's installed, there's wireless access points that are installed throughout the campus and it's in the corridors. And it's meant to cover your apartments, right? And you all are really smart, tech savvy people, right? You didn't used to be, but you are now. You're using smart TVs and iPads and, and iPhones and Samsung and all this stuff, right? Which I knew you would. I knew you were gonna do this stuff. And so we had an Inspire install Wi-Fi and, and for a while it did really well. But as you keep buying more smart stuff, um, the Wi-Fi starts to lag. So we're installing Spectrum which is going to, going, to, going to go directly to your apartments. And it's going to have a wireless access point directly in your apartment. So your, your apartment will be covered totally. And you'll actually have two options for Wi-Fi. And both of them will be very good. Um, and you, you can take that Wi-Fi that you're using from Spectrum and you can use it outside of your apartment as well. It's going to have full campus coverage just like the Inspire stuff. So you'll be flying like a college dorm soon. Um, they're, they're putting the backbone, the infrastructure in now, and they're on the second floor pulling wires. So if you see people from Spectrum doing that, that's the part, that's what they're doing. Then there's another group of Spectrum people here, because Spectrum seems to have a little bit of a monopoly. But there's another group here rolling out new cable boxes, right? Everybody, most everybody's got those at these points, or at this point. Um, and those are really um, much better cable package and our 1890 um, in-house channel should be working much better on that system. And I think it is. Um, I think they're mostly finished with that. I have it in a later slide. I think they're on the fourth floor of um, Windsor now. Um, okay. Can you clarify what happens when we press our pendant? I answered this last time too. Yes, the pendant notifies the emergency call system and identifies your location on the campus by triangulating your location, then notifies security concierge. Can you encourage residents to wear their name badges? How many people are wearing name badges today? Yeah, most everybody. This resident would like us to all wear name badges. And it does help um, other residents get to know you. Um, I, talked to, I talked about this, but I wanted to include this question again, just in case there's any confusion, and this is what is going on with the downstairs. Um, when the new clinic, salon, and gym are open. So coming soon to the Preston Garden floor, um, a new woodworking shop, a new theater, a pottery studio, a hidden treasure shop, and an office for the Residence Association, a fitness annex, and yes, the little store will remain on the garden floor. So right now, we have demo uh, done demolition in the clinic space, and it's being converted into a theater room. So we have added some additional stairs going up to the new stage, um, and we're doing the flooring in there the next uh, couple weeks. And then we'll um, sheet, finish the sheetrock up and do the painting and everything, and it'll be ready to, to start to be used. Um, we're installing the speakers, repurposing the speakers from the old theater into the new theater space. We're adding some additional lighting and some lighting that can be dimmed uh, for that for that location. The small office for the WRA has already been built. Um, and then once that theater opens, then we'll be converting the little, the little theater into uh, a little store for hidden treasures. And one of the things that's involved in that is concrete work that's outside of that space and in the, in the um, kind of below that ramp um, that we're going to install an exterior door so that you the hidden treasures can take furniture small furniture and things Through that door and they can also set up their hidden treasure cells down there um, On that level, so it's really convenient because you'll be able to walk down that concrete ramp or, or Roll things down and ramp and then up a ramp into this little store space um, Then a new woodworking shop will be located um, near the grounds floor service elevator to replace the current fitness gym um, and the new gym, the Annex gym, is um, larger than the Annex that was in the Windsor. It should hold about seven, eight pieces of equipment. Um, and the woodworking shop is being located there because it's near the power sources and we can get power into that room. It's also a large enough space that we can move two by fours and pieces of plywood. 
Um, and we really need the space, um, Westminster needs the space as much as we would like to provide the amenity to the residents. So um, we'll be working on that. That'll be, um, and then, you know, that that new fitness area will be created before the, the current gym is closed down. And then on the, the other side of that uh, fitness area, the fitness annex, we'll be placing a pottery studio in there. It'll probably have about four stations. There's already water in there. It's, there'll be a, uh, like a sink and, and spinning wheels and a, even a um, kiln uh, for drying the pottery and stuff. So. Um, what is the electric lock system and why? <laughs> so, so this is the new keyless entry system that I've been talking about for a long time. Um, the system will provide more security going forward and will allow key fob access for all exterior doors and your apartment home door. So eventually, once the system is completely online, you only need one key fob to get in and out of the building and to get around the building and to get into your apartment home. And, you know, I know some people are disappointed because it locks itself automatically. And that's really an additional safety feature. And I know that that's an inconvenience, but this day and age, we need to be more secure. We need to be aware of our security and surroundings and be really good stewards and lock our doors. And, you know, there's been some terrible stories in the news about people getting into senior living communities and going into residence apartments and stealing from them and things like that. And though I think we have, you know, pretty good access control, we don't want to allow that to happen. We also, this system will allow us to unlock it from the desk. So say your daughter comes in or your daughter's son comes in and wants to visit you and, and you're not feeling well, we can unlock that door from the desk and allow them entry. Um, if you lost your keys, we can unlock the door from the desk. Security will have a full access key fob as well, but we won't have to run up to apartment you know, 469 to um, unlock that door, we can just do it from the reception desk, which is a good thing. We also have the ability to track who's going in and out of every door. Um, each uh, associate will have a, a key fob assigned to them. So the housekeeper that takes care of your apartment, say they're scheduled to come in your apartment at nine o'clock in the morning. So we can assign that apartment access for nine o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock in the morning and just for that apartment. And so it really gives us a lot more control. Um, it's really a safety feature. We can run a report to see every single door on the campus, who went in and out that door, how active that door has been. So, um, There was a question asked in passing in the hall. Somebody asked me, um, can, we, can we deactivate the self-locking mechanism? And yes, we can. Um, we can put a bypass on the door for a period of time, and they can do that at the security desk. So say, for instance, um, say for instance, you had the flu and you weren't feeling well for several days, we could put that uh, door in bypass. Security can, or I could. And we can put it in bypass, and then anybody that needs to get in and out of that door, they can do that. Um, but, you know, I think we should limit that to special circumstances like that. The other good thing is that these key fobs can't be duplicated. There's a specific numeric code um, designed into each key fob, and so you can't just go to waste hardware and have them make you another, which has happened. They're, you know, unfortunately, the mechanical keys are very easy to duplicate, and we've had residents copy keys eight times handed out to seven or eight individuals. I mean, it's sometimes, it's really unsafe. It's really not, not a great idea. Uh, when are the soap dispensers in all the bathrooms going to be lowered to be accessible to someone in a wheelchair? I've asked the team to check all and install at the ADA approved height by the end of June. Um, just gonna go over this one more time because we still have people, when the fire alarm sounds, pressing their pendant When the fire alarm's sounding, we're, we're pretty sure that there's some kind of emergency. You don't really have to press your pendant, but 
Um, what should you do when the fire alarm sounds? Residents should shelter in place in their apartment home, but be alert and prepared for the potential of an evacuation. Uh, it doesn't happen very often, but occasionally. Um, you will be notified by our staff or the fire department if you need to evacuate. Residents should refrain from calling the reception desk because we hear it too. Um, and there is no need to press your pendant or to pull a fire pool station when the alarm is already sounding. And also, the fire pool station should not be used for, I don't feel safe, um, or I need a drink of water, um, or to order from. It doesn't work for that either. We've had a couple confused residents that thought it was for another purpose. Um, it is, you know, we might get some pop up thunder showers, thunderstorms, tornadoes. Um, although right now we take any rain at all, I think. Um, when a tornado warning is announced, warnings will be announced over the emergency call system in your apartment and also the business phone system, the business paging system. Uh, residents should move to an interior corridor space away from windows and doors and closing your door behind you. And if you happen to be in a corridor and there's a door ajar, they shouldn't be, um, we should shut down, shut all of our doors, shut all of the exterior doors as well, um, just for safety. And then try to stay in the interior of the corridor. Shelter in that location until an all clear is announced over the system, um, both systems. And again, there's no need to press your pendant <laughs> or to pull a fire pool station during this type of emergency, unless you're injured, of course. <clears throat> a warning is issued when a hazardous weather event is occurring, imminent or likely. So typically it's a, you know, a sighted funnel cloud that's heading towards a particular area or a tornado um, that appears on the, you know, Doppler radar, and then they issue a warning. Um, so, you know, they're warning you to take precautions and be prepared. And you are, in all three buildings, you are in a concrete construction, like one of the safest things you can be in during a tornado. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of glass in your apartments, so you really don't want to stay in your apartments. You really want to move to an interior corridor. You know, what a watch is. It's the risk of hazardous weather. Um, you know, the, it's highly likely that hazardous weather could occur. Um, and then advisory is issued when a hazardous weather or hydraulic um, event is occurring, imminent or likely. Um, ad advisories are for less serious conditions than warnings. And then of course, outlooks, everybody knows what an outlook is. Um, construction update, everybody, you, anyone, anybody wanna ask any questions right now? I'll stop there for a minute. Okay, I surprised you. <clears throat> so we should continue to use the um, My West Wi-Fi access until you let us know? Yes, yeah. Okay. We'll let you know when it starts to go live on each floor. And you'll know because they're gonna actually be installing that wireless access point in your apartment. Okay. So you'll know when it goes live. Once the background, or the, I'm sorry, the, the backbone, the infrastructure is installed, the system is capable of being live in that apartment at that moment they install it. So you'll know, but we will send out notification and it'll happen just like it did for the cable boxes. They'll start at the bottom and work their way up and each floor will occur. And we'll, we'll pass out warnings when they're gonna be, you know, a notices when they're gonna be installing it. Yes, ma'am. You use the term garden floor. Yeah. What floor is that? <laughs> that's, a, that's the ground floor. Okay. Some people call it a basement, but I don't like to think of it like that. Well, I live on the ground floor. There you go. Well, we call it, yeah, ground floor, garden floor. Marketing likes to call it garden floor because it helps sell apartments. And so I get used to, I get used to doing that, speaking that way as well. Yes, sir. Would you consider uh, having the doggy do uh, place moved from the Windsor into a more convenient and visible uh, spot? 
Yeah, we talked about that this morning. I had a meeting with Plan Ops, and uh, apparently building and grounds brought that up. Um, so apparently the plantings around the, the Doggy Juice Station have grown up so large that you can't get to the Doggy Juice Station. Well, it, 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 that's part of it. So clearly up. somebody dropped some. But also, uh, the person has has to find it first of all. Yeah. And and it, and uh, since they don't find it, they don't use it. And and then there, uh, you have to step off the sidewalk onto uh, pavers, and then make a left into uh, a flower bed. I'm lost already. <laughs> yes. Well, and I think they are too. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna move that next thank, week. Thank we're gonna you. move it next week. All right. Thanks. And we'll, we may need to install another one. Who knows? I don't know. But, um, yeah. So clearly, the the gardening around that area has been really well fertilized over the last few months. So yeah. Okay. Anything else? Okay. I'll move on. So construction update, um, we're actually making a lot of progress on the Carlisle. Um, we are getting ready to probably August, September, shut down uh, the road around the Windsor and the Carlisle as we do the concrete work that's necessary for those roads. Um, so that'll be occurring and I'll, I'll try to warn you about that. But the site utilities have been completed. The um, transformer arrived last week the exterior masonry stucco work you can see that that's almost completed they're a couple weeks behind on that but it's not going to affect the overall schedule uh, they're hanging drywall most of the drywall on both sides of the wall has been hung at this time and they have installed the elevators the majority of the elevators um, next for us is city inspections we're still thinking that we're going to have substantial um, completion on 12:29, so that's when we'll we should be able to start parking on campus, and then we'll be moving into the Carlisle Independent Living, hopefully um, January ish, maybe February 1st, and then move in memory care and assisted living is probably going to be that last week of January. So it's really it's coming, just a few months away. This is Windsor expansion picture and then I think I have a video for you to watch it's about a minute long of where we're at with the Carlisle <laughs> two years really flies by <laughs> when you look at it like this Um, so the sound system has been installed in Harrisville and the Bistro. We're still waiting on the control boards so that the, um, the transformers basically, the, the transmitters, and the installation of the new AV equipment including the drop down screens, our new um, projectors. All of that's still back ordered. I asked for an update um, from him and I haven't received it yet. Um, the signage project assessment was completed. The plans being developed. I have a couple residents that um, have agreed to look at the signage plan before we purchase it to make sure that from a resident perspective, we're kind of covering all the bases. Um, I should have that plan in my hands uh, in the next two weeks. The signage package for the exterior has been signed off on, so they'll be in about six to eight weeks, they'll be installing all the exterior signage on the campus to kind of bring it all together. We're also in that signage package getting address labels for all of our lobby doors so that you'll be able to tell what entrance you're at pretty easily, large white letters. Um, 
we're working on, I think I already mentioned that we were working on improving the address um, identifiable ability to uh, the emergency services and folks like that. So yeah, um, Spectrum cable boxes are now on the Windsor fourth floor. Um, the Spectrum Wi-Fi has begun installations on the Preston um, ground and second floor. This is the infrastructure work. Um, the keyless entry system has begun and is on, I believe, the second floor today um, and probably yesterday as well. Solar roof project has begun on the Preston, like I talked about. We'll be doing the, the supplies are all on the roof, so we'll be doing the actual layout of the panels over the next um, few weeks. They're going to start next week for that. Um, I am having uh, pergola covers installed, similar to what we put on the pavilion um, in the Windsor courtyard. So the same material that we had put on the pavilion, which makes it a lot cooler to sit underneath, we're going to have installed on all the other pergolas as well, as well. And they'll be doing that in the next couple weeks. Um, dining services really hasn't changed their um, recommendations. All of this pretty much stays in place. Um, I think you know that the bistro is open for breakfast and lunch only. Dine in will close at 2 p.m. They're open till 4 p.m. for to go orders. Still can't have any guests at dinner. We hope to start to allow guests at dinner when we open the bistro restaurant for dinner. And we hope to do that um, by fall. Um, do make sure that you're filling out the um, comment cards in the kitchen so that or the, the dining room so that the the associates are getting ranked on that um, they're getting ranked on their service skills and they're eligible for a, um, extraordinary service incentive bonuses on their paychecks so they would appreciate you taking time to fill out and score them one to five and they would tell you to think five where are those cards those are on the tables um, in the dining room and then they are also when you walk in the dining room at those um, hostess stands I didn't get to, I took I, 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 oh man, I forgot to put the picture in of you getting your award I'll do that next time but I was up in Dallas this last month and um, Ruth received a service excellence award from leading age and I was able to give that to her that was Received some good news, and that is that we were uh, we did receive best senior living um, honor roll. So for both the independent living and assisted living, so thank you for filling out those tedious little surveys on the computer. I really appreciate that. We also had our Fitch rating reaffirmed triple B, and I just mentioned the deficiency free survey in the healthcare center, which is extraordinary, and that's. Um, three years in a row, so that's pretty incredible in this day and age with COVID going on and everything to, to receive a deficiency-free survey is a big deal for us. Um, just some associate updates and promotions I wanted to mention. Uh, Brent Austin, some of you may have noticed, has been rehired as Director of General Services. Um, so he reports directly to Sarah Lloyd and is taking over supervision of plant ops and security, transportation services, IT, and environmental services. Oliver Gore, know all, everybody know Oliver? Yeah. Oliver's been here for, yeah, go ahead. Oliver's been here for more than 20 years and has worked in various capacities around the campus. He's uh, worked in housekeeping and refurb and uh, security. Now he's uh, been promoted to maintenance supervisor. And so, so Oliver will be supervising the work order system, which you are all so fond of. <laughs> and uh, part of Oliver's task is to reboot the system for us. And you know, we I think over the years the work order system hasn't served us as well as we would like to. I met with the in, entire team this morning and, and told them that I was going to mention this to you today, and that it is expectation for us to complete work orders within 24 to 48 hours in most cases. So that's what we're gonna aim for. Um, there are occasions that, you know, parts have to be ordered and they're, they're you know, back ordered or whatever. In those instances, we need to communicate to you better and let you know what's going on. So 
I know that there's been some discontent with the work order system. And I think Oliver has the right can-do attitude and understands what extraordinary impressions are and is gonna work really hard to make sure that our work orders are being completed timely. So if you see Oliver, congratulate him on his promotion. Antonio Montgomery has been moved to the refurbishment manager position at his request. Um, Antonio is really wanting to grow his skill set, so he's um, supervising the refurbishment of our apartments. Um, Stephanie Garza has been promoted to environmental services manager. She reports to Brent, um, but she's supervising all environmental services now. Um, so that was a promotion for her and well deserved. She's done a great job. Roderick Johnson has been promoted to environmental services supervisor, so she, he backfilled Stephanie's position. And this allows for promoting from within, which is really building career tracks within Westminster. So congratulate him if you see him. Sarah Faust was promoted to assistant food and beverage director. Sarah's been with us several years and has really done an outstanding job working hard. So congratulate her if you see her. One of the things that we're trying to do to be competitive in the market and really to continue to recruit good associates is to create career ladders within our community. So, you know, a person can come here as a dishwasher and, and if they really work and, and devote themselves to doing a good job, they could be an executive chef one day or a food and beverage director. Uh, Felipe is a good example. Felipe started off as a server in the dining room. We call them hospitality ambassadors now because nobody wants to be a server. But, um, you know, Felipe started off there and he, you know, was promoted to a floor supervisor and then from floor supervisor to senior floor supervisor, then to assistant dining manager and now to dining services manager. So that's creating career tracks. And one of the, one of the things that we're really trying to do is help people achieve their level best. And, and if we can help promote them, um, support them in their schooling, and really help them achieve what they want to out of life, then we get other people wanting to come here to start their careers. Um, and it's great for Westminster's community. Um, Jose Hernandez was promoted to assistant dining services manager, so Jose started off as a floor supervisor as well. Brooks Eastman um, was promoted recently to activities director for assisted living and memory care. Uh, absolutely, Brooks does a great job. Brooks, I hired as a CNA um, more than 12 years ago. So um, he does a great job. He did a great job as a CNA. He was assistant activities for um, the Arbor for a while, and then he promoted to activities coordinator, and now he's the director of assisted living and memory care. So that's really great for him. Um, Tracy Sims, Activities Coordinator for Assisted Living and Memory Care, she actually was start, she started here as a hospitality aide and has worked her way up as well. Carla Dubois, um, she's our new sales counselor, so if you see her, make sure you welcome her to the community. Um, you know, London left us, she moved to Florida, so um, she, she left in a vacant position. Originally, I had hired Carla to do the Assisted Living Admissions and sales for us, and we needed um, someone to replace London Clary, so Carla accepted that position, so if you see her. Um, I mentioned the Westminster Review campaign um, last month, and I think many of you received emails and texts asking you to fill out a survey for us. It was a Google review. Um, I guess many of you did because we won that contest for our division, so thank you for doing that. How many of you have filled out the resident experience survey today? Okay. Well, they said only about 73% of you did. But uh, so we're working on that. Um, those have to be postmarked and in the mail uh, by Wednesday, right? I think that's the 21st. So that's the end of it. I do appreciate you all participating in it. Um, and again, you know, please take time to fill them out. The, the more participation we get, the better. The more comments that we get, the better. Even if you don't like my hair or what I do every day, it's okay. Write it in the comments. Just wanted to remind you about star cards. Um, take time to fill out star cards. The associates really appreciate hearing kind comments from you. And uh, there are a lot of great associates working here at Westminster. 
And uh, Mr. Ashworth had a great article on the banner, and I really appreciate that about creating a kind culture and being kind to our associates and one another. And I know that, I mean, just having a, an appreciation for the fact that associates showed up for work today, right? There are people, you know, industry represented restaurants, um, for instance, that, you know, people just get tired of taking flack or whatever, and they just walk out the door. Um, there's a restaurant that we are very fond of up in Gerald, um, and their staff just called in, all of them called in um, yesterday, so they closed the restaurant. Um, you know, think about, there's so much going right here. There's so many good associates. They're showing up for work every day, working hard, sometimes in the heat, sometimes frustrated, sometimes understaffed, but they're working hard every day to do the best they can for you um, and, and each other. So let's just appreciate that, show them appreciation. Pat them on the back. Uh, and that's all I have. Any questions or, okay. Chuck, um, may I ask the list of the promotions? Will that be on the portal or could you have it in the boxes? There's a lot of good things to remember. Yeah, I can do that. And also I thought I would include it in the newsletter for next month. Thank not you. this month, not uh, July, but August. Okay, and one other question. In your list of the Carlisle, when will they begin to take down that um, security wall that closes Windsor off from the car lot. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, what's happening there is we have to have a fire marshal sign off on um, that building, and and they haven't done it. And and what's holding it up now, I'm told, is some pieces of paperwork. And they're actually pieces of paperwork that we submitted, but they don't have record of us submitting. So we're having to, there's been a lot of turnover at the fire marshal's office and also the um, city of Austin's development office. And we're trying to chase those things down once we get those found and they can actually get it in their, their computer system that they're completed, then they can schedule a fire marshal final inspection. And once that's done, we can activate the delayed egress doors that have been installed between those levels of care um, but I can't turn those on until the fire marshal signs off on it. And so that's what's holding it up. And we'll, really, if you think at it, it's, what is it today, June 17th? So this thing was supposed to be open April 11th. And so it's holding up, not anything that's costing us money right now, but it's, it's holding up the renovation of the, the current rehab, because I can't touch it until I get the, the folks from the current rehab moved to the new location. And then, um, you know, those offices, the rehab is supposed to be gutted on the second floor and made into offices. None of that can happen until I get this um, cleared by the fire marshal. We're Thank trying to. Thanks, I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, we're trying to get it done as quickly as we can, but it's, it's just one thing after another, it seems like. Yes, sir. I wondered when the uh, garage extension under the infill tower will be open they won't let us open it until we receive the uh, sub substantial completion approval. Okay. So that, that is probably January of 23. So the, the building is officially finished December 29th. Now, if, if the city of Austin would really cooperate with us, we could probably get it open right around then because all of the city inspections are gonna start in October. So maybe, you know, we learned some lessons, I think, on this construction. Um, like, for instance, they want these delayed egress doors submitted before um, you install them. So they should have been submitted to the fire department as a separate submission for them to review during the permitting process. And they didn't tell us that at the time. So that's why they had to be submitted late. But we learned that lesson, we'll do that next time. But they won't let us park, even though the, the parking garage is finished, they won't let us park in there until all of that's been inspected. And the construction complete. Yes, ma'am. Oh, who is going to be allowed to park in the new parking space in the Carlisle? Will, will only 
Westminster employees and uh, residents. Residents. For the most part, um, the answer to that question is yes, mostly residents and associates. But there will we will assign parking spaces to private duty sitters. They'll have a key fob specifically assigned to them. Also, visitors that often are coming in uh, will assign some key fobs to those folks too. So that maybe a, a daughter or son provi helps provide care for you every day. We'll assign key fobs to those people and they can use the parking garage as well. We do have about, um, by the time this is all finished, about 75 parking spaces along the west side that are public, that will be public parking spaces. Um, and those will not be assigned. The visitor parking spaces mainly. Yes, sir. My wife and I moved into the Windsor expansion. I guess we've been there about five weeks now. And as with any new building, if you have issues come up or something doesn't work right, this doesn't work right, or this doesn't seem right, whatnot. I am, we are so incredibly happy with the support you all have provided by quickly coming up, addressing issues, and getting things fixed, and getting things set up, and then just also for us, we're new here. And the people that we run into, uh, the residents, but also all of your staff. Uh, you know, after being in the corporate world for 30 years, you get a feel <laughs> for what's good and not. I just have to say thank you. It's been wonderful. Well, thank you. You made my day. <laughs> Any other questions? Comments? Concerns? Comment is I'm Joanne Jones and I received the biggest spam call you could possibly get a couple of days ago. Publishers Clearinghouse called me and said I had won 18.1 million. Congratulations. <laughs> and they were saying oh. and gave me the name of the man, Robert Gump Initiative. Make it and you didn't fall for it. So we just And I'm still here, and I'm going to stay. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm glad you didn't fall for it, too. Good for you. Well, if this was been fine, but do you know what made me miss? The, the Skidmore College professor that talks about Ireland every Friday at 11. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, you know who to blame for that? That lady right there. She scheduled me. I'm sorry. You can always skip it and watch it on the resident portal. You know. Yeah. I. It's a. Uh, <laughs> it's funny you say that. You know, I. There are days that I'm like, oh, do I really want to do a chat this month? You know. But I, I do feel like there's value in it, and I love spending time with you guys, even if. Even if you don't always agree with me or you you know question me about something I don't want you to, I don't. I'm very transparent. I'm not hiding anything. Um, so any question at all, anytime. And I'm sorry that it interrupted you. Your your pro regular programming. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, that's right. That's why we did this because we didn't want to interfere with the the men's thing this afternoon. Right. Yes, sir. Could you please uh, speak to the uh, change that's happening in the fitness uh, area and uh, how long do you think it'll be before some new personnel begin to manage that? Okay. Um, yeah, unfortunately, you know, I have resigned and um, she didn't give us a lot of notice. So we um, kind of inherited a little bit of a mess and we're trying to find coverage. I think Robin's covered most of her classes or got her classes mostly covered at this point. We'll be hiring a new fitness coordinator. Um, we've received resumes already. I, we had a lot of resumes, you know, when, when Ev applied. Uh, we were disappointed that um, it couldn't be worked out, but unfortunately, you know, she made her decision and, and you know, we'll, 
we'll work with it. I, you know, I know that, that many residents were fond of Ev, and I was as well, but, you know, Westminster is much bigger than one person. It is, and, and it's, Westminster continues to grow and evolve, and, and we continue to improve on our programming every day, and I think that the fitness program will continue to improve. I had a couple, not hateful, but disgruntled, I guess, um, emails or notes that have been left to me over the last few days. And one of those I think hurt me the most was that um, they said that I clearly don't understand how important the fitness program is to the residents that live here. And um, I would beg to differ. Actually, I invented it. Um, I hired the first fitness coordinator, um, put the wellness checks program in place, started the fitness program here at Westminster, um, and have evolved it over the years. Um, although I don't look really fit, <laughs> I believe you all should be, and I think we all should try to be as much as possible. Um, and I know how important it is for you, and I want it to be important for Westminster, and it is. Um, but, you know, occasionally associates and management, you know, they meet an impasse. And I have to act in what I believe is the best direction for Westminster every day in every way. And sometimes that means that an associate that you're fond of is no longer with us for one reason or another. Um, that doesn't mean that I don't appreciate that associate while they were here and I don't appreciate that associate as a person. That just means that They've either evolved beyond our program or maybe we've evolved beyond them. Or, you know, there's difference in opinion and it just can't, you know, satisfy that difference. So um, I do expect that the, you know, whoever we hire will be good, will be certified in multiple things, yoga and things like that. And, and also I expect them to teach two to three classes a day and host the entire wellness area. Um, and I do not want them in an office for 40% of their day. That is not what a fitness program is. And um, I'm not going to allow that to occur. I have people that sit in offices. Um, and I have people that are directors of the Community Life Services program. Ruth in the back there has evolved the Community Life Services of Westminster, including the wellness program, to the point that it is today. Also, Robin Aiken. As, as the health and wellness director has evolved the program. And it's those people that I work through every day to grow your programs and to continue to make Westminster a great place to live and work. And uh, I'm sorry Ev's gone, but she is gone. Let's move on, okay? And we will get somebody in as quickly as possible. Robin has worked on um, coverage for all the classes that um, are vacant and also um, getting in an, an instructor or somebody that can in service all the residents on the equipment, the new equipment that is in the, um, the new fitness room. And you know, that, that fitness room and that equipment was um, designed by Ev. And um, you know, previously to Ev, it was designed by Amanda. Ev didn't like Amanda's design, so we scrapped Amanda's design and, and bought the stuff that Ev wanted. Um, but I do, you know, I think there's sometimes an impression that yes, I'm making decisions, but I'm making decisions with no input. That's not the case at all. I'm constantly listening to my leadership team and Ruth can vouch for me that I, I meet with every leader every week and I listen to them and I get input from them and I make decisions based on what I believe um, is the best thing for Westminster and in, in conjunction with my leadership team. And I, you know, I know that turnover at all is rough, right? But the turnover that Westminster has experienced over the last 15 years of me being here um, is the lowest in the industry. And actually, in the LCS portfolio of 150 communities, we have the lowest turnover of those communities. And have continued to do that year after year. We're one of the only communities in the industry that have won the top workplace award for eight years. Um, so, thank you.
there, there is a lot more going right than going wrong. Um, and you know, and I know some of you are mad at me, uh, and that's okay. You know, I I try to do everything I can for Westminster's success and for your success. I want you to be happy here. And if, you know, I don't wake up in the morning thinking to myself, well, how can I piss off a bunch of residents? <laughs> I want you to be happy, right? I want you to love living here. And I want you to be wowed by the way that we take care of you. And I want you to love living here and never question whether or not this was the right thing to do to move into Westminster. And, and we do strive for perfection. We maybe never achieve it, but we're always striving for it. So, hope that answers your question. Yes, ma'am. Well, I know things didn't work out with Ed, but we didn't have a chance to say goodbye to her. And that was her decision. Actually, you know, ideally, people give what I call professional notice when they leave a position. That didn't happen in her case. Okay. Oh, yeah. And I, you know, I think, and I'm not, I don't want to down anybody, so that's, you know, that's her decision. Um, you know, I'll give my last job um, before I came to work here at Westminster, which is a long time ago, 15 years, but um, I gave three months notice because I knew, I mean, I was running a facility and I had a corporate position and I, and I knew it was going to create a deficit. I was moving, um, but I think, I think that honorable and professional people give uh, appropriate professional notices, so I was really disappointed by that. Well, thank you all. Thank you. Have a great weekend.